It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Buffalo Bills. All that and more coming up next. We are just about four miles off the shore of Lake Erie at Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Buffalo Bills. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. Always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? two-minute drill, maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. For the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between he is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on him, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. A good position to be in here, second and inches. On play action, Allen. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. They'll run it. Here's Cole. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, so much for picking it up on the ground on third down. Third play of the drive in this defense showing strong early. I wonder how much of that was scouting. I wonder how much of that was a gut feeling like, okay, let's just go ahead and sell out here and get after them thinking they're going to run the football and stuff them early because they've now set the tone. They've set a precedent right here. That if you're going to try and run the ball against us, it could be hard going throughout this game. Here's the punter Martin now to kick it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. And Smith and this throw finds Smith and Jigba. So no gain on the play, and that'll bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Geno now to throw. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. 
Now Gino on first down. That's into the hands of Parkinson, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 44-yard line, here's second and five. They'll get this out wide to Metcalf. And Metcalf going to have the Seahawks first down as he'll take this up close to midfield. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Now Smith, oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And the Bills are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. And I think this will win a ride very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. So after the INT, it's Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Buffalo. It's the Bills in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Allen now looks to throw. And that is caught. It's Davis. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. 33 yards that time. Not really any offense for them to speak of here in this first half. Maybe that's what they needed, that big play. Yeah, it seems that maybe everything changes right there. They've been a little slow out of the gate. We've seen that. But that one big play, that could spark a big burst right here. Here we go now on first and goal. Right there, baby. They'll run with Cook. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. And the ball situated at the nine. Second and goal. They try again with Cook. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want Touchdown, Bills! Allen on target there to Stephon Diggs. And the Bills post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. A drive that time of six plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs.
to the touchdown pass to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field ready for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Here's a second and five. Now Gino. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group. We just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Throwing now is Gino. Escaping the pressure right. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time. When nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. On first down, Smith. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. From the 50, it's Smith. Smith and Jimbo hauling it in on the out run. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Smith on first down. And Walker has it. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now it's Smith. Caught on the slant. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Keep in mind, they can still get a first down here as they come up on second and inches. On the counter, it's Walker. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder. And they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Smith trying to get him to the line quickly with the clock rolling. Now Smith on third and two. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The Buffalo defense does its job, but it's fourth down. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. Myers kick 
is good. So a conservative decision there, but it does put him on the board. And I know the players hate it and the coaches hate it, but sometimes you just got to take the points when they're there. Sometimes a field goal is pretty darn good. Four seconds, all that remain here this first half as the kick gets away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bills were led in the first half by their all-world quarterback, Josh Allen. He has a touchdown pass, and that amounted to the only touchdown of the game for either team thus far. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. trailing but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter taking it about the one and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 and the Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter so Charles we saw a pretty entertaining first half close ball game remember there toward the end of the second quarter the opposition scored to take the lead now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Golf has been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. the middle they run it's Walker takes it to about the 37 I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going he's such a big part of their offense I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run anything because you're right he's pretty much been completely neutralized here's a second down and seven from the 37 Sticking with Walker on second down. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down moving. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Here's third and nine. Here's Smith. That is caught. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 42. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Straight ahead, Walker. A solid stiff arm. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt.
A quick throw out to lock it. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the Bills' 22-yard line. Back to throw, Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. A five-yard pass on first down and another five-yard connection there. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. From the red zone now, Smith. Throwing the out route, and he connects with Fan. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off. But a nice game there for a first down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Smith throwing again. And he finds Rocket in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Touchdown, Seattle. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that Jason right there. Myers. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. On the return, Deontay Hardy. Now Hardy on the return. And they will regular him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Back now in Buffalo. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the first quarter. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he looks for his man to come open, puts it right on it, and they pick up a first down. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak. Not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. And meanwhile, Allen's throw going to be caught by Davis. 
They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. Allen looks to throw on third and one. The left side caught by Daniels. And he's going to have a Bills first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. How many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they... Oh, no, they lost the football. And one of the linebackers has got it. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. We got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll come up facing third and five. Smith. is going to be incomplete. Got some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Allen and the Bills now down 10-7. Just over a minute 40 to play. Now they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Here's Allen. That's taken in by Knox. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they got to go thank the guys on D. Here comes second down at five. Throwing Allen. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. To throw is Allen. He gets his complete to Diggs, and I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. Now Allen. And they'll find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Allen. That is caught by Shakir. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. I'm starting to wonder here, are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield. I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left.
Bit of a pressure spot here for Tyler Bass. This to potentially send us to overtime. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to tie things up in the final minute. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. And we have free football overtime. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. So the Bills going to be the first to get it as we are back underway here in overtime. Now Hardy on the return. But a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get sent to take over here. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience... How much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker to nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Allen. Looking on the out route, he finds Shakir. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A give to Cook out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. One of the best of the last decade or so, Bobby Wagner in to bring him down. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. On second down, Cook. Oh, heck of a move. Man, pretty nice, aggressive run there before being brought down just inside of the 30. And he's able to get more than half of what they needed. That brings up a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yards to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Well, good start for him under center here in overtime, now three of three. And this we have to know you have playing quarterback. You've got a confident thrower right now. Someone is taking care of the ball, but not being timid as well, and is moving the team downfield. That opens up your playbook and allows you to dial up some big shots if you want them. Here's a first and ten at the 14-yard line. Now Allen. 
Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. And it's caught. And the Bills are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the four-yard line. Shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it. All right, I've got the, I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. Oh, and it's intercepted! And now look at him go! And the Seahawks are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. What a huge takeaway for this defense, the interception on the opening drive of overtime. What an absolute disaster of a time for his first interception of the game because throughout the game, He's made sure to keep the ball away from the other team. He's done a nice job of that. Here, the interception pops up. And now, on the other side of the field, all they're thinking, get three, and we go home. The Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. Complete to number 14, D.K. Metcalf. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 16-yard line. Second down and six now. Smith to throw. That completes it again to Metcalf. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. A big mistake last time they were on the field tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah and I don't think there's any question about it as they head out on the field for this drive. That whole offensive win is just thinking redemption. You know it moved it really well. It didn't pay it off. This time they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. One overtime, how about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Allen. Completes to Shakir once again. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. the middle it's Cook they give him about four on the play but he's marked short so it'll be third and about the length of the football pretty good job defensively thought he was going to get it but they knew where that marker was and they stopped him just short of it what it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side is it defense understanding as you noted where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Personal foul. Baseman. Defense. 
In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have points. So all eyes now on Tyler Bass. This to win it in overtime. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This just 32 yards officially from the right hash. And he got it. The kick is good. And they have won it here in double overtime. Well, Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf. And today, that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road, and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis. 